Well into 1939, the Depression continues to take its toll. Bread lines and soup kitchens dot the landscape across North America. But here in Quintland, all is well at the home of the Dion Quintuplets. The Quints, those five adorable little curly-haired angels we've come to know and love, are symbols of hope in these dark times and a source of prosperity for the lucky townsfolk of Calendar, Ontario. The world continues to beat a path to their door. And when they get there, the locals put on quite a show. Souvenirs, autographs, all this and more. Precious mementos of a day spent visiting the famous Dion sisters. Here in Northern Ontario, there's fun for everyone. Yes, the crowds just keep on coming. More than 3,000 people a day pour into this little town, and they come from everywhere. Here's a family that's come all the way from California. The Quints are even more popular than Niagara Falls. Cars line up for miles each day along these rural roads. Yes, everyone in this community benefits from the quintuplets, especially the local filling station. And to celebrate the first day of summer, the world's most loved little girls held a strawberry social for none other than Helena Reed, America's most listened to radio personality. Dr. Defoe certainly draws visitors as well. Here he is with Hollywood motion picture star Marlene Dietrich. This week, Dr. Defoe had a different kind of visitor. This is Dr. Joseph Burroughs, a pioneer in the emerging field of child psychology who will study the quints. That's very good, dear. Very good. There they are. I don't usually like to interrupt the girls while they're being taught. <laughs> oh. Hey. Girls? Oh. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Girls, look at these. Oh, my goodness. These are going up on the wall, girls. Oh. Mary tore her up. Let's see what my little Marie has done. Oh, no, 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 don't crumple, don't crumple your beautiful painting. No, no, let Dr. Defoe see it. Oh, yeah. oh, Marie, this is excellent. You should be very proud. Thank you, Papa Defoe. Yes, I think yours shows the most imagination. Now, is this me? <laughs> but I'm hardly this handsome. <laughs> is Papa Defoe that handsome? <laughs> <laughs> However, do you tell them apart, Doctor? Oh, easy. Now, the girls are identical, but uh, there are differences. Yvonne is the biggest, Marie is the smallest, and Annette looks the most like Yvonne, and that leaves Cecile and Emily. And if you can tell the two of them apart, the last one is easy. Right, girls? <laughs> <laughs> Successful child rearing depends on discipline and routine. Children must be occupied in healthy, stimulating activities. Now, this is at the heart of my method. Now, this is the schedule for the quintuplets. Each day has been divided into 21 units of time. Wake up, 6.25 a.m. 6.30, emptying of the bladder and other ablutions. 7.40, prayer, 7.45, breakfast, and so on. There must be no deviations whatsoever from this schedule. I'm sure the girls will adapt beautifully, Doctor. We have our own routine here, Doctor. Uh, twice a day, the, the, the girls play in a little park uh, inside the, uh, the observation gallery. They don't even know that anyone is there. It's no different than if the children were playing in the schoolyard under the watchful eye of a teacher. True, true. We call it free play. Doctor, what about visits from the parents? I don't see anything on the schedule. I wouldn't worry about the Dion's nurse. They hardly have a visit. That brought 
Mama, why can't I have curly hair? I love girls like the Quins too, Mama. Don't call them that. They have names. Leafy, I forbid. Of course, he doesn't have to go to bed. Dr. Defoe is the Quint's favorite human, much more like than Papa or Mama Dion, who are still this disgruntled that their children have been taken away and who complain that they could get rich if they could exploit their Quint's properly. Papa, the kids at school, they say the government took away the Quint's because you and Mama, you aren't good parents. You think that's true? You think we're about parents? No, Mama. If you think that, the government's gonna take you away, too. No one's gonna take you away, honest. Your hair's not curly enough. Hey. She didn't mean it. She started. The baby. The food's gone. Please, Maggie. She won't see anyone but you. Push, Madame Zulu. Push. Just one, madam. She's <laughs> big. It's so good to hold a baby again. Do we get to keep him, Mama? This one they're not going to take from me. Just sit there, Sissy. Mm. 30 seconds to go, Annette. And I mean, go. We don't feel like it. Ah! Right on here. This is not what we mean by free play. Fun. You can't play. Not Ivan, I'm an act. You're trying to fool me. You're trying. It's two minutes past their bedtime. I'm sorry, they've always been a bit hard to control. They're completely off the schedule. And he's completely off his rock. My girl's misbehaving. <laughs> Show some manners now. Say goodnight to Dr. Burroughs. Goodnight, Dr. Burroughs. And goodnight to Papa Defoe. Good night, Dad. Can we have a story? Oh, it's too late, Marie. Please, Papa Defoe. No, no, off to bed now. Off to bed. It's your music time. Scamps. I'm afraid I've indulged them a bit too much. Good night, girls.
getting stronger, you could go and visit the girls tomorrow. It's too late. For what? The girls don't know me. They don't know me. They don't care. When I go, if they let me in, the girls act like I'm just a visitor. And that's all I am. A visitor. Well, you're not going to change things by staying away. No. But I'm going to survive. I'm going to be a mother to the children I have. Libby McNeil Libby for quintuplets endorsement of baby food, tomato juice and pineapple juice, 8,500. All right. Harry S. Bond, manufacturer of children's boots and rubbers, a royalty of two to eight cents per footwear with a minimum guarantee of 47,500. Fine. And our crowning triumph, gentlemen, quintuplet dolls are now outselling Shirley Temple dolls, two to one. <laughs> now there's an idea for a movie. Shirley Temple versus the Dion Quints. Best of three falls. <laughs> Best of five falls. <laughs> Never mind, George. How can we help you, Mr. Dion? Well, this is a guardianship meeting. Well, I'm one of the guardians that I'm going to attend. You have a problem with that? Of course you're welcome, Mr. Dion. We are only surprised since you've never shown interest in attending before. Take a seat. What is it you want, Mr. Dion? What do you think? I want my kids. I want a meeting with Hepburn. I want the law that took them away from us. I want it abolished. Mr. Dion, at this time, we are discussing the end of the fiscal year. There's no excuse keeping them locked up. Mr. Dion, this is not the appropriate time to discuss. Appropriate? Do you know what she's done to us? To my wife? What we lost? You have only yourself to blame. Why are they kept in a hospital? Hey, they're not sick. Why can't they live like normal kids? Leslie, must we listen to that? Give us back our kids. It is simply out of the question. Now, if you have nothing constructive to add, may we please continue? McMurtry and McCutcheon candy bars. That'll be fine. Quiet playtime now, girls. Fifteen minutes. be allowed to stay with the others. Now, if you can't play quietly with the others, you're just going to have to play by go. yourself in the isolation room. Without the others. It's only a temper tantrum.
Doctor, I don't like to criticize my colleagues, especially the head nurse. Yes? Nurse MacPhail. She has no feelings. She isn't fit to be with children. And I gather you disapprove of Dr. Burroughs' methods as well. I'm not an expert, but the way the girls are being raised, it's all wrong. Really? And how do you think they should be raised? I wish they could live like normal children, with brothers and sisters and friends. It's not healthy for them always being together. Sometimes it's like they're one child, one child in five bodies. How will they learn to live in the real world? Learn to be individuals? You think they should be sent home to that hovel, deprived of any cultural experience? I was raised in a poor family, Doctor. We never had enough of anything, but all my memories are happy. Well, how fortunate for you. Nice, I... I believe it would be best for you to resign. No, but... Why? Nurse McPhail has had reason to complain to me too often about your insubordination. Oh, please, doctor, please. You'll leave today. After, after I say goodbye to the girls. Such goodbyes are not in the best interest of the girls. I've been with them since, since they were poor. It's not a good idea for the girls to become attached to any one person on staff. To anyone but you. If you're finished, nurse. You're a very cruel man. Didn't even let me see the girls to say goodbye. Oh, no. Come in. No, I can't, madame. I can't miss the bus. I just... I had to tell you, the girls... What is it? Dr. Defoe, he doesn't believe me about Nurse McPhail. The girls need you, madame. They need you to protect them. Don't say that, Marie. There's nothing I can do. Don't give up, madame. Don't give up hope. It's out in two minutes. Nurse Evie, where's Mary? Where did she go? Yeah, where? Nurse Lemoyne has gone home. Gone? She's gone? Yes, she's gone. And 
no amount of crying is going to bring her back. They done. What right do you have to come in here? What right? I am the mother. The mother! Here. Well, you made. Why did you do this to them? They have been touching themselves in an inappropriate manner. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Emily? Where's Emily? What have you done to her? Huh? Oh, Emily. Come, come. This is the isolation room. It is a perfectly correct form of discipline. Don't you ever ever touch my kids or hurt them again. Because if you do, I'll do the same to you. Now get out. Get out of here. Get out! I'm going to call the guard. Mama? Yes, Mama is here. Mama will always be here. It's been a while since you saw me, eh? Since you saw me, I had a baby. A little boy. Them out of there. <laughs> Get them out of there. It's all in there. A record of what they say about us in the press. The photographs they used to make us look like fools. Diane, may I ask why it took you this long to consult the lawyer? You're not the first. I've spoken to three over the years. It cost me a lot of money to find out that no one wanted my case. <laughs> no lawyer likes to lose, Monsieur Diane. The odds on winning a fight against the government are not favorable. My girls are being abused. My wife saw it with her own eyes. The nurse who told us about it has been fired. Now there's no one in there we can trust. Yes, I know. But the issue here, Monsieur Dion, is the problem of your reputation. Why would the courts give custody to a man who accepted a contract to exhibit his daughters? You think that? That Oliver Dion is a monster? A man who only wants to exploit his kids. No, that's not what I'm saying. Have hey. you been to Quintland? Twice a day, my kids are put in a cage so strangers can stare at them. Now you tell me who's exploiting my kids. I thought you were being French-Canadian like us. Well, thank you for the consultation, Monsieur Poulet. Monsieur Dion. 
Monsieur Dion! They breed like rabbits. They're French. <laughs> and Catholic. Didn't you see the sign? No admittance. You want to get your girls back, eh? You really want to get your girls back? You were right. You do need someone who's French-Canadian. Yeah? Well, all I know is that if my name had been Smith or Brown, I would have never been able to take away my kids. That's it. That's the strategy. Monsieur Dion, I can help you get your girls back. I'm absolutely convinced. Monsieur? Mon père. When the Quins were born, I felt proud. As a French Canadian, like all of us in this room, I felt proud that the Dion had brought honor to us. Then I started reading things about them, the papers, hearing stories on the radio, and I was no longer proud. So when our government took those girls and gave them to Dr. Defoe to raise, I thought, okay, good. Now they're in good hands. But now, now I know better. Now I know that those little girls were taken from Elzir and Oliva Dion not because they're bad parents, but because they are French, they are poor, and they are Catholic. How else do you explain the lies about the Dion? The willingness of the public to believe them. Would the Dion Quins have been taken away if their parents had been named Brown or Smith? <laughs> and this terrible injustice has been initiated by a government that is racist. Yes, yes, racist. And we, as French Canadians and Catholics, know what that means. Tell them, Oliva. Tell them what you told me. Well, it's not really the government that I blame. It's the folk. More than anyone, he's the one who's responsible. A doctor who's tended to patients in the area for over 20 years, and he still doesn't speak French. <laughs> he's taken complete control of our girls. He acts like if he's their father instead of their guardian. He makes it almost impossible for us to visit. And he fired the only nurse there that we trusted. Marie Lemoine, French girl. The only one who spoke to the Quins in their mother tongue. The girls are growing up unaware of their language, their culture, and their religion. Mon père, monsieur, we are the only ones the Dion's can turn to. We are their family. 
We must spread the word. Denounce the government, in the press, the stores, the businesses, from every pulpit. And not let the pressure until those five little girls are home, home in the arms of their parents. questions about my raising the gasoline tax to eight cents. So whatever it is you're on about, I'm grateful it shifted attention away from that. <laughs> Gentlemen, I want you all to know I have nothing but the utmost respect for our citizens of French ancestry. Thank you. Mr. Sir, Premier, uh, Premier. Premier. All for now, fellas. The editorials. Read them. They're in French. Allow me. Le gouvernement de l'Ontario est... I don't speak French. Sorry. Um, not only has Marie Lemoyne, a French-speaking nurse, recently been fired, but head of the hospital, Dr. Defoe, has refused to allow the quintuplets to be educated in French. In approving these actions, Premier Hepburn insults and offends all French Canadians. What the hell is going on up there? But we This have. is very smart. This forces us to deal with the Dion's. Throw them a bone, whatever it takes. Just get those editorials out of the paper and off my back. Yes, sir. This is blackmail, pure and simple. Nothing but a, a crude attempt to get back the girls. The thing is... Doctor, the Premier himself requested you meet with Dion. He's counting on your diplomacy to help smooth things over. Won't you come in? My attorney, Monsieur Poulain. Monsieur. Sir. Pleasure. Sir. Please. Mr. Dion, the Premier is very concerned that this unfortunate misunderstanding has taken place. Now, let's start with the firing of Nurse Lemoyne. There was absolutely no intention to deny your girls access to the French language. Nurse Lemoyne was fired because of her insubordination. Poor nursing skills, nothing more. She'd been warned not to be friendly with us. That was her insubordination. Gentlemen, let's not get mired in details. What we propose is to hire a French-speaking teacher. Would that be agreeable to your client, Mr. Pony? Very agreeable, sir. But we have a few other requirements. To start with, the nurses must all be French-speaking to preserve the French culture of the girls. Also, parents must be guaranteed free and unrestricted visits. This is something the government promised, but which the staff has never respected. I have it. The parents insist that the ridiculous and inhuman schedule of Dr. Burroughs be stopped. The parents also want an end to the public show with the girls. The children, not trained monkeys. There's also the matter of the girls' income, how it's being managed. We want to see the books. Outrageous. Jeffrey, who is this man? And have you, have you, have you seen uh, Mr... Uh, Poland. P Poland's credentials. Because he's French-Canadian, he can't be smart enough to be a lawyer. Is that what you mean? I'm sure Dr. Defoe didn't mean to imply any disrespect. Gentlemen, I won't tolerate this man's ignorance. And I won't tolerate my girls being abused. Abused? How dare you suggest? I don't suggest, I know. Nurse McPhail, I want her out today. I'll leave us. If you don't throw her out, I will. I am the head of this hospital, Mr. Dion. I, I make the decisions here. Oh, you think you can continue to run this circus till my daughters are 18? I have nothing more to say to this man. 
When this is over, believe me, you'll be walking out that door for good. Gentlemen, shall we continue? Azir. Look, Nurse McPhail. She's leery. Wrong one, Azir. Wrong one for us. This is giving in to the Dion's. It'll set a dangerous precedent. Let us worry about that, Doctor. Besides, we haven't given in to them in any significant way. Nothing's going to change, Doctor. The Dion's just don't know that yet. Publicity agent and uh... <laughs> Helen, there wasn't tonight a scream. Well, that's one word for it. Quite a celebrity, aren't you, Roy? <laughs> Not me. No, it's my baby girls. They're the celebrities. They must learn to be looked at, talked about, written about, and studied without losing their, their sense of proportion, their ability to enjoy life. Celebrities come and go. Oh, not my girls. Oh, they will always have to buy their privacy and pay for it dearly. They must continue to build sufficient funds to make it possible for them to have peace and, and, and then freedom as the years go by after I'm gone. What do you think they'll be doing when they get older? Oh, when they get older, I think people will stop looking at them and start looking to them. There'll be world tours and lectures and well, they'll become goodwill am 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 ambassadors. Model Canadian citizens. They'll meet with kings and queens and the presidents. They'll be leaders. What happens if they just want ordinary lives? But they're not ordinary girls. They're the quints. And, and that will never change. And the biggest laughs were provided by none other than Papa Dion. And yes, that's our very own miracle doctor, Dr. Alan Roy Defoe in the graduation gown. Yes, our very own miracle doctor played along like a good sport he is. No fertility stones for me. In Europe, German forces are... He knows what he's doing. He knows as long as people are laughing at me, he stays in control. Aliba, that's the best thing that's ever happened. This means we can sue him for defamation and wait a couple of years to go to court. He deserves worse, my He deserves a taste of what I've been getting. Is there anything happening soon with they phone the girls? They're, they're supposed to meet the king and queen. 
<laughs> nothing doing with the king and queen. You know the way people feel about him. What else? Well, he's always giving lectures, but that's out of town. There's, there's a big Mother's Day radio broadcast. For the girls. And what do the girls do? Just say a few words. In English? He's like my dolly, except he's warm and he smells good. Hmm. His name's Oliva, like his papa. And he's not just a baby, he's your brother. Do you know what that means? How can he be my brother when he wasn't born at the same time as me? <laughs> Not all babies are born together like you girls, Yvonne. Usually they come one at a time. Oh. There's so much you don't know. Outside these walls, people live together in one house. The mama, the papa, and the babies. What's it like outside? Where all the people are, outside, the people, the people go round and round the tunnels. <laughs> Just round and round. And they don't know what coats. And they live in cars, and the cars go up and down the road. Up and <laughs> down, up and down, up and down. down, 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 down. Hey, come closer, girls. It's Papa. Come on, come closer. Come. Come on. Hi, girls. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I like this. Just like this. You and me, Oliva. And our girls. Listen, Izzy, I got an idea. It's something the girls can help me with. Hey, Fee, you want to do something for me? Huh? For your papa? Papa the foe? No, Ivan, me, huh? your real papa. Dr. the Fool's not fit to be anyone's papa. He's not a nice man. It's going to be like playing a trick. You want to know what it is? Ivan, what are you talking about? I want you to do something special for me. And it's gonna be our secret. <laughs> Your papa has a big treat for you. Something the mean doctor the foe won't allow, but that all children love. It's called chocolate. Look. Senator's wives next week, and that's in Washington, D.C. Oh, Eddie Canner called. He wants you to be on his radio program. The fee's $1,000. Good. Has my invitation arrived yet? Uh, from the king and queen. Yes. Uh, no, no, not yet. And here is your draft of your column. You're giving advice to mothers with a colicky baby. I'm sure it'll be fine, George. There they are. There are my darlings. Did you miss me? Huh? Did you? Lord, <laughs> how are you? I'm fine, Roy. You? Exhausted. <laughs> Too many speeches. I don't know how you folks do it. Have you done Carnegie Hall? That was my last one, to a packed house. The place is huge. I lost my voice halfway through. <laughs> do my girls know their lines? Uh, doctor. Excuse me. The Dion's are at the door. What? Uh, why do they have to come now? T t tell them... Uh, uh, sir, sure, they'd, no, like to watch, they'd like to watch the program, and they are with their lawyer. All right. Hello. Excuse me. Do you mind if the Dion's sit in? Well, as long as they're quiet. 30 seconds there, Mr. Thomas. Yes. And in France, President Lebrun has announced that Hitler's occupation of Prague has once and for all ended any illusion of appeasement. And now stay tuned for Lowell Thomas, who broadcasts to you direct from the nursery of the Dion quintuplets. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, tonight I speak to you live from the nursery of the Dion Quintuplets. And a very nice room it is, too. In one corner, I see five comfy beds, each with its own color. Cecile's bed is green and decorated with a drawing of a turkey. Yvonne's bed is pink and adorned with a bluebird. Emily's is yellow with a tulip. Annette's is mauve and marked with a maple leaf. And last but not least, little Marie's is blue with a teddy bear. And here they are right next to me, the Dion quintuplets. Yvonne, Annette, Cecile, Emily, and Marie. Good evening, girls. And who better to wish the Mothers of America a very happy day but the Dion quintuplets? Am I right, girls? Well, I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the girls are in full agreement with me on that subject. And as soon as we get their microphone adjusted, we will uh, hear a few words from them. Well, here they are to send their best greetings to you ladies on Mother's Day. Yvonne, Annette, Cecile, Emily, and Marie. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it, uh, it seems that the uh, quints are, well, they're playing a, a little trick on me. Now, girls, wouldn't you like to say a few words to the mothers of America? No. No, you, you wouldn't? And why not? It's not nice to speak in English. Eva, girls. No, 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 don't. We it's seem it's to be experiencing technical It's a joke. Well, now, come on, girls. Ladies and gentlemen, girls. As we attempt to restore service from the nursery of the Dion Quintuplets. Girls. That's my girls. Don't you understand what this French mess can do to me? Chief, you're much too important a man to be bothered by a bunch of Frenchies. Good Lord, man, where's your sense of judgment? publicly ridiculing Oliver Dion in the newsreels, then this doctor of litter spectacle in New York. Why not? Don't why not me. I'm not one of your fancy New York friends in the press who can lap up that kind of crap all day long. It was harmless fun. It was an honor to be invited to the Saints and Sinners luncheon. It, it would have been disrespectful if, if I... Leslie here had a quiet talk with Dion lawyer about your little New York show. They're toying with the idea of suing you for defamation. However, they've agreed to drop the suit in exchange for a look at all financial records, including yours. What? It's none of their business. I don't know how you managed it, Roy, but you got this reputation as a saint, a selfless man who's never profited from his association with his adorable little girls. However, that picture would change if they got a look at your books, now, wouldn't it? And the advertisers always demand that I be in the picture. They say the quints are nothing without me. Roy, you received $30,000 as a technical advisor on the Quince movie, plus thousands of dollars for lectures, for endorsements, everything from Caro Serp to Chevrolet. But you've always known this. You don't talk, Roy. You, you just sit there and listen. Now, this is what you're going to do. You're going to resign as guardian. No. Oh, no. You have no choice in the matter. But you gave those girls to me to keep them safe till they were 18. Yeah. They're the only things in the world that mean anything to me. They're not things, Roy. They're people. You're the one that made the decision to build the hospital, to, to, to set up the board. Quintland, it, 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 it was you. 
Your government. You're no longer a guardian. That's my decision. However, you're still in charge of the hospital. Should be grateful for that. Deliver the books to the Dion's, everything except Roy's. See if they'll accept that. Supplies for hospital and staff house, $2,484. Salary, construction foreman, $395. Wages, policeman, $1,698. Why are those expenses in the girls' books? Because they're paying them. They're paying for everything. All the expenses are coming out of the quintuplets' own money. <clears throat> Maintenance, nurses' salaries, fire insurance, medical supplies, legal services, food. Not only for the quints, for everyone. Phone bills, hardware, signed painting, lightning rods. You believe this? Even the lightning rods. I thought. I thought the government was supposed to pay for all this. Ah, you thought that, eh? Well, why the government's making millions in revenue from the tourists is the girls who are paying for everything. They're even paying for their own birthday presents. What's this? The foe's phone bills. <laughs> They're paying for his, his phone bills? Yes, sir. And look what all this is costing them. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. I just don't get it. All these people still wanting to see the Quints. It's a cult. A cult of the child. It's not hard to understand. We're living at a time when people can barely hold on to their hope, believing in dreams. Children. Children represent endless hope, endless possibility. Very nice. That's why I get the big money. <laughs> Dr. Fo about that little Thomas embarrassment? Oh, nobody would have been more embarrassed than Roy by that. That pleading tone, live, on air, the whole country to hear. I'm telling you, Nelson, there's something going on here, and it's something big. I just wish I knew what it was. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Would an autograph be possible? Wait here. Uh, wait, wait a minute, what you are you just doing? just wait there, I'll be back. The king and queen. I am invited to meet the royal majesties and introduce them to the girls. <laughs> you know, George, I've met so many celebrities, but this takes the cake. Doctor, I was wondering if for any reason I should be looking for another job. Hmm? Defoe losing grip on Quint. That all is not well in Quintland where Dr. Alan Roy Defoe's hold on his cute Quint is said to be slipping. Nonsense, George, pure utter nonsense. I'm still the boss. Mrs. Dion, hear me out. There's two sides to every story. I just want to hear yours. As easy as that. You think it's as easy as that after all the things you said about us? I would say, go to hell to you, madame. But I'm a religious woman, so I won't. People say that you're not a good mother. People say that's why you lost the girls. They don't know me. They don't know anything about me. Then tell me. Tell me, and I'll tell the world. If my husband sees you here, I don't know, he'll shoot me. This must be yours. This kitchen, look at it. You there baking pies. It's like. It's like an illustration out of a magazine. Maybe for you. Good, let's just act like this is any other day. That's perfect for my purpose. Fine. Then 
Then why don't you shell the peas? Why don't I what? Shell the peas. Shell the peas. This is the shell. And those are the peas. Oh, will you look at that? Do you have children? No, no, not a one. No oh, kids. That explains a lot. Oh, who has time? Oh, maybe if I could find some poor dame to have one for me. Oh, no offense. Now listen, I came here to interview you. Tell me. Tell me who you are. Tell me what your story is. <laughs> When I was little, I had ten dolls, and I told people that one day I was going to marry and have ten kids. That's all I ever wanted, to have ten kids. You must have married awfully young. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. Hold him, please. Hold him? Oh, my goodness. When I was 16, all the girls from all over, the only one they wanted was an Ivadion. It was a bon parti. A good catch. That surprises you, eh? Oh, maybe just a little. He had one of the Ooh. best farms. And he was a hard worker. And there were only two people in the village with a car. The doctor and Oliva Dion. And you're the one who, who caught him, huh? He caught me. From the minute he saw me, there was no one else for him. So my, my dream came true. Ten kids. And a good man at my side. A good man, madame. If you knew him before, all this. I hear you've made fresh attempts to get the quints back. Is that true? I never wanted them gone. But how can you possibly? You see my house? Is it clean? And my kids? Do they look unhappy? So why are my girls living across the street? But how could you cope with all your children and the quints in this house? It's not hard. Not when you love kids. Ask Madame Lebel. She has 18. What? 18. Children? Children in a house like this. And, and she cooks and cleans for all of them. And, and she even runs a store. And she's a best-selling author. And spends all her time hunting for fertility stones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Nazir, why don't you come and sit down? Why don't we have a good talk? You know what they're worth? The girls, do you know? You couldn't even guess. A million bucks. That's their net worth. A million bucks. I have children that are worth more than a million dollars, and I can't afford to buy new shoes or cod liver oil for my kids. And we have to live like this. When was the last time you had a new dress? Hey, when? I don't need a new dress. Well, you're gonna get one. And a fancy one. 
and the kids are going to get new shoes and bikes and toys just like they get across the street. It's our money. I want it. And I want everyone to know who's been stealing it. It's not important, Adila. Nothing's more important than getting the girls. Why don't you visit them? They never let me in just before a show. Full visitation right at any time. You heard the government, man? Go and find out if you meant it. Mama, did you see my new dress? Mm -hmm. Mine's yellow yeah, like a buttercup. Yes, you all look so pretty. So pretty, I have to kiss you. We're not allowed to have kisses, Mama. Papa the first says it gives us germs. Madame Dion, I'm sorry. We have to get the girls ready for the show. Nurse, she feels warm. I'll get the doctor. Is your throat sore? It is? And do you feel tired? I can't wait to have you home. Mr. Dion! Is something wrong? She's sick. I examined the girls this morning. She's hot. Let me see. All right, Emily. Hardly warm. Probably just a cold. Children get them all the time. Take them all out. Girls enjoy their free play time. Look, kids get colds all the time. Yes. You've been keeping me away from my girls for years. Years! Telling me I'd give them fevers and, and sickness and oh. germs. Don't touch them, don't kiss not them. Not in front of the and children. And now you, you tell me she can run Mrs. around Dion, outside with the cold because you don't want to stop the show. Mrs. Dion. Come on. Come on. Mrs. Dion. Now. She, she came right to me, no, no hesitation. Yeah. Oh, uh, get Helen on the phone. She should know about this. Thank you. Ah, poor little Emily. She was devastated. Dr. Defoe for Miss Reed. Ah, these incidents with the parents. Yes, thank you. She's just about to go on the air. Tonight, I bring you a new chapter in the saga of the Dion quintuplets. And I warn you. It will shock you. It will anger you. And it will irrevocably shatter your illusions. Tonight, I have invited a world-renowned psychologist to join me. This is a man whom one speaks of in the same breath as Sigmund Freud. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Alfred Adler. 
Doctor, I have asked you to study the case of the Dion quintuplets. Please, tell us your findings. Thank you, Ms. Reed. The quintuplets live like inmates of a modern orphanage. They are suffering from emotional starvation. Living in a glass house with the constant staring of crowds is not conducive to normal human development. More serious than this, psychologically speaking, is a separation from their parents. If this continues, I anticipate serious emotional disturbances at some future time. Thank you, Doctor. My friends, as much as it pains me to admit this, I must tell you that I have been wrong. Tragically wrong. Like so many others, I have been deceived into thinking that Dr. Alan Roy Defoe was a selfless, humble man whose entire life is devoted to the quintuplets. But, as we have seen, from the recent and deplorable Circus Saints and Sinners spectacle, Dr. Defoe is a man obsessed with his own notoriety. Today, he clings tenaciously to the quintuplets, for they are his guarantee of continued fame and fortune. And his grasp now threatens to strangle the dear little ones he was once sworn to protect. But what, what do you ask of the parents? My friends, I have sat in Elzir Dion's kitchen and I have bathed in the warmth and love of her home. And I have seen the other Dion children, fine, healthy boys and girls. They are very normal, see a contrast to the pathetic little trained monkeys across the road. My friends, Oliva and Desir Dion have not now, nor have they ever been. Greedy imbeciles that the irresponsible and ignorant press have portrayed them to be. And if at one time there were sound medical reasons to isolate the girls from their family, those reasons no longer exist. And this very night, my friends, at this very hour, five lonely little girls lie in their cots in a sterile hospital ward and weep bitter tears for the life they have never known. Their little girlish voices whisper in the dark, a plea we cannot continue to ignore. Mom. Sorry, Doctor, but Mr. Hepburn is tied up at the moment. So let's hear your latest report from Quintland. Well, the latest report shows a noticeable drop in tourism. And it's not just war jitters either. There's a marked decline in interest in the Quints. The young quintuple doll sales are slipping. Revenues and royalties are down. The advertisers are less keen. They say the girls are overexposed. Washed up at age six. And here they are, the royal couple. Queen Elizabeth has long expressed a desire to meet the Dion quintuplets, and her wish is a royal command.
Is everything satisfactory, Monsieur Dion? Extremely. Très bien. Ah. Now, here is our list. Mr. Dion, of course, is here, and the children sitting over there. Thank you. Let's go, girls. Now, the Dion's will meet the king and queen first. Your audience will occur just after. But I'm... Whose request was this? Doctor, I'm asking you to accept this as a way of dealing with a difficult situation. For the sake of the girls. Mr. and Mrs. Dion and their children. I am sorry. It gives me great pleasure to announce the long-awaited reunion of the quintuplets with their parents, brothers, and sisters. The guardianship bill which made the Dion quintuplets wards of the crown has been terminated. Effective immediately. The guardianship yeah. bill which proved so effective in the early years of the quintuplets has now been deemed no longer necessary. The Dion's, Mr. and Mrs. Dion, are excellent parents. Oliver Dion is a successful farmer and businessman. Mrs. Elizer Dion is respected throughout the community as a devoted wife and mother. The quintuplets will retire from public life to lead a normal life with their family. I wish, of course, to publicly thank Dr. Alan Roy DePoe. His great contribution cannot be overlooked. Dr. DePoe has had to resign as guardian and physician to the quintuplets due to ill health. We wish him a very speedy recovery. Congratulations, Oliva. I, I always said what an injustice it was, you being being deprived of your kids. Oh, oh, finally, our prayers have been answered. And you, Clavis, you were praying for us all this time, too. I, uh... I always said you were good parents, even when all the reporters were saying different. I stuck up for you. It's terrible what gets written in the papers. Yes. Those people should be held responsible. It should be a law. Oliver. Now that you're in charge, I just want you to know you have our full cooperation. Yes. What do you mean? We were thinking... Uh, people still want to see the girls. Yeah. Even if the foe's gone, that doesn't have to change. We're willing, that's all. We're willing to help you run the place, if you like. Madame Legros here had a wonderful idea. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Well, the weather's been so bad and so much rain, they had to cancel the shows. Why can't the girls play outside when it rains? You could dress them up in raincoats. They'd still look cute. <laughs> oh, you're not going to listen to them. <laughs> See, what do you think? I'm grateful, Mate. So is Azir. I hope you know it. Yeah. And I hope you're expecting my bill, now that you're a rich man. <laughs> but this isn't the end, Oliver. Think of what the girls could do for French language rights. They can make public appearances to lobby for French school. I don't know. Sounds good, but um, 
Can you afford them? The Xian quintuplets don't come cheap. Marie. I I have to leave you, my dear ones. You have to leave? For a while. Where? Kiss for Papa to fall? As soon as the new house is built. Why? Why do we have to move? Because of the quints. That nice. Do you have names? There's too many to remember. Will my friends still be able to come or will the guards chase them away? Will people stare at us? I don't want to be stared at. I don't want to be stared at either. Hey, that's enough. I don't want to hear any more complaints. Be 
because there won't be a viewing today, Ivan. There won't be any viewings. Not ever again. You gonna have room in that house for 11 kids, Mr. Dion? The new house will be built in that field. There'll be 10 bedrooms, five bathrooms, maid rooms, a music room. One of the reception rooms will be done entirely in leather. And I'll have an office with a marble fireplace and a chandelier, a crystal chandelier. That's where I'll conduct my business affairs. And all around the perimeter, we'll have a fence, a security gate. You think that'll be necessary, Mr. Dion? The Dion quintuplets will always be of interest to people. They'll have to be protected, like always. There's no show today. Today is a very special day. Today you're coming home. But we're already home. Girls, this is the nursery, the hospital. Where I'm taking you is your real home. Where you'll be living with Mama and Papa. Papa the foe? Yvonne, Papa Defoe wasn't your real papa. He was your doctor. Your real papa and me, we want you to come home with us. We're gonna be a family, all of us together. Where's Papa Defoe? Yeah, where? Did you know that the Ford had been hospitalized? Mrs. Dion and I wish him a speedy recovery. You know, there was never any animosity between us. It was just something that was made up by the press. of the Dion quintuplets, reunited in the bosom of their family. Like all good fairy tales, this one ends happily ever after. And so we say, good night, quints. Happy, happy quints. together. Upstairs, girls. Where I show you? Come, come with me. Hey, not so fast. Come and.
kiss your papa good night. Oliver. Come. Come and give me a good night kiss. It's not too much to ask. Oliver, it's too soon. Come. Come. Say good night. Good night, papa. too long. I told you it was going to take time. Hmm? They need to get to know us. Going to Toronto with us will do them good. Toronto? Yeah, there's a big war bond rally tomorrow. If we do well there, the advertising agencies will be begging to sign us to new contracts. Who knows? Could even be more Hollywood movies. You're serious? Sure. Why not? And uh, make sure they have curls. The public likes them with curls. Movies. Commercials. Tours. Is that really what you want for them? Why not? People want to see them. People will always want to see them. They might as well pay for the privilege. When? When did you decide it was all right to treat them the way everyone else has? I'm your father, Elsia. I know what's good for them. I would now like to introduce to you my daughters. Ivan. <laughs> Annette. Emily. Cecile. Emily. And Marie. Marie. Smile, girls. Smile. 